Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, upon popular request, today we're going to check out Sheikh Hassan Farhan El Maliki from Quranic Islam, who's going to discuss the topic, do only Muslims go to heaven? So this is, of course, a question of utmost importance to my viewers here, because I know for a fact that not only Muslims watch this channel. We have Christians, we have Jews, we have New Agers, Buddhists, Hindus, and whatnot. Of course, it is a very intriguing question to know if only Muslims go to heaven. But moreover, what I I'm truly interested in is the definition of a Muslim. Is a Muslim truly somebody that is born into an Islamic family and now by default, by name, he is a Muslim? Or are we going back to the real interpretation of the word, somebody that is submitting his will to God? And then we have to ask our question, could there be a Muslim, a submitter to God amongst the Jews, amongst the Christians? I personally do believe so. However, I'm I'm very curious to hear what Sheikh Hassan Farhan El Maliki has to say. With no further ado, let's have a look. So this is the first time that we're reacting to an Arabic video with subtitles. I'm going to put the sound down a little bit and read out the subtitles for you. Allah has clearly put faith as a condition to enter heaven. Not true. It's not just faith, says the Sheikh. Explain the idea first, just to be clear. In regards to the people of heaven and people of hell, that must be based on statutory verses, such as Allah Almighty saying, Allah does not charge a soul except within its capacity, and adhere to the fitra, basic nature of Allah, upon which he has created all people. So when you find a simple elderly woman in Sri Lanka working her farm, who has never heard of Muhammad or Islam, and seen nothing but evils, bombings, and disputes, how do you expect her to believe in Islam? And so Allah would only judge her by universal values regarding injustice, dishonesty, and such. Good deeds do not go unrewarded, because Allah is ultimately Lord of all mankind, not just the Lord of Muslims. And the Quran is for all mankind. Yes, but let me finish. There is universality in Islam and the Quran. Absolutely, man. And this is really the impression that I got whilst reading the Quran. There is the religion, El Islam, if you will. Absolutely, no doubts about it. We see it, how it is spreading now all across the globe. However, that being said, there is a deep underlying red threat, if you ask me. The question of who truly believes in God, the question of who is really submitting his will to God. And I'm of the firm conviction that we can find such people within any religion. People that did not fall into shirk, people that were good-hearted, people that wanted to obey their Lord, that intuitively knew that there is only one God, etc. I really come to the conclusion that there is a clear distinction to be made between religious affiliation and who is true truly a submitter of the Lord of the Worlds. It emphasizes the phrases, the Prophet is mercy to mankind and Allah is Lord of all mankind. This was hijacked by the politicians such as the Umayyad dynasty and others. Due to the discrimination and ignorance of the authorities and their jurists, they made it so that Islam, Allah, the Prophet and the Quran belong only to us when it's supposed to be mercy to all. Fair enough, man. Because the Quran itself addresses the Christians. It does not say, hey, Christians, stop being Christians. No, it simply corrects their beliefs. It does not tell them, now you will have to convert. It's very interesting, man. Thereupon, there are different atheists. The one who is arrogant, doesn't do research, and a denier who reviles religions. Sure, most of them. 
and the serious researcher who died before finding the answers and never hurt anyone. Aren't they different? Allah is the all-seer of his servants. So an atheist researcher can possibly be in heaven? Is the question here. Of course, why not, says the Sheikh. So according to you, we may find Muslims, Jews, Christians and atheists in heaven. Of course, the atheist won't be an atheist anymore when he is in heaven or hell. Yes, which is why I mentioned Allah does not charge a soul except within its capacity. Sure. The atheistic inquiries have become deeper and I've been approached by young men. I may have insufficient knowledge in natural sciences. But I emphasize to them other matters such as confirming invariables. But speaking of invariables, Allah says, and whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted of him. Fair point. Let's see how he answers. Allah does not forgive ascribing partners or worship unto him. That is, if we know what kufr, non-belief, truly means. One who knew but denied the truth is a kafir, a non-believer. Now the people of Japan, America and Europe, I do not call them kafirs, but people, because the kafir must first know the truth, not be ignorant of it, then denies or covers it up. Absolutely correct. A kafir is somebody that denies God's existence even though he knows that God exists. The best example of a kafir would of course be Iblis, somebody that saw God firsthand and then denied his existence. That of course does not apply to somebody that never saw God or moreover than that didn't even hear the message of one God. There are two meanings of kufr in the Quran, either denial or covering up and shunning signs of Allah. But the ignorant is not kafir, but one of the people and is under Allah's will. Yes, of course, everything happens within God's will, so therefore we do have to have atheists as well. I think that perhaps there are more people in heaven from other nations than from the Muslims. Yeah, we do not know. There are more non-Muslims in heaven than Muslims, he asks. I said perhaps, it's a possibility. Because I find the goals of the Quran and what are they? They don't know. The goals of the Quran are monotheism, to worship Allah without partners. Yes, that's the main message, for sure. Okay, great. These are the goals, even the purpose for creating humans and even jinns, and all creation is to worship. Here's a fair point. Excellent, but hear me out. Allah Almighty said, I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. All right. All right. But the next question comes up, why do we worship Allah? The man thinks deeper, yeah. I like it. You won't find any Muslim who can answer, but the answer is in the Quran. I personally do have an answer for myself, however, I want to hear him out first. O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those before you. Why? That you may become righteous. Righteousness is refraining from inflicting harm and aggression, according to the Quran. Not the common definition of having a protection between Allah and his servant. With these broad definitions, they gave worship, righteousness and piety all the same definition. What is righteousness according to the Quran? 
Cooperate in righteousness and piety, but do not cooperate in sin and aggression. It's in the Quran as well. When you examine the verses of righteousness, you'll find them as a counter to aggression. Very true. So I absolutely love what the Sheikh points out here going against the mainstream with this statement. However, yet again, I'm simply going to say what I saw when I was reading the Quran. No, I'm not a scholar, not a Christian one, nor a Muslim one. I'm simply saying what I saw when I read the Quran. And I have to say that it absolutely resonates with what this man here is claiming. The prayer itself was not for God, even though we are created to worship God alone. No, God does not need need our worship whatsoever. He is self-sufficient. He doesn't even need us. Therefore, why would he need us to worship him? To boost up his ego? Of course not. God does not have an ego. This is a thing of creation that we are battling with. So God does not need our praise. God does not need our worship. However, still we are created to worship him. This worship is for us, of course, because it humbles us and makes us righteous yet again. What is the point of praying five times per day and then you go out and commit adultery, commit criminality, commit all kinds of degeneracy? What is the reason for prayer then? This prayer should remind you, of course, of becoming righteous. And a righteous person, of course, abstains from aggression if not needed. There is always a time and place for everything, of course. If we have to go to war, you have to be vicious. You have to be a killing machine. No doubts about it. There you will need aggression. But in your daily life, you should aspire, of course, to become just. You've mentioned positive values regarding aggression and injustice. But I'm talking about the one issue of faith, monotheism and polytheism. What is polytheism? You'll find that we might be more polytheistic than they are. I absolutely love the point that he makes here. Let's think about this rationally. Let's think about this logically. If we look at certain Muslims, no, of course not all Muslims, just certain Muslims. Hear me out. Certain Muslims worship Prophet Muhammad. How can that be, you will say? That is not true. Worship belongs to God alone. Absolutely. On paper, this is what it says. On paper, it claims that you should only worship God. And Muslims, some, tell themselves that they worship God alone. But the question is truly, do they? If you look at their behavior, I talked to a few Muslims back in the day. When Jesus was mentioned, they didn't say peace be upon him. However, when it came down to Muhammad, they couldn't get enough of him, of his stories, consistently repeating how great Prophet Muhammad was indirectly worshipping Muhammad. Yet again, guys, I know that people do not want to hear this, but we have to be rational and logical about things. An atheist does not believe in the principles of worship. Think about it logically, man. An atheist does not believe that worshipping even is a real thing. Do you understand? They believe in pure materialism. Therefore, worship is just an exercise for them. It's not even real. However, indirectly, of course, course, they worship science and their politicians and their superstars and what not. Don't you understand? Even a person that does not believe in worship, worships. And this is why the Sheikh has a great point here. Even Muslims that, yes, on paper do understand that worship is only to God alone, can worship other things. Maybe profits, maybe money. Do you understand how many Muslims, yet again, I met in Germany, that were addicted to money, addicted to gambling, addicted to p and whatnot? All of those things become our top priority. And if they become our top priority, they become our God indirectly. Don't you understand? Therefore, we worship those things yet again. And the Muslim, quote unquote, yet again, is not free of that sin either. It's not enough to be a Muslim on paper. We really have to submit our will to God. Polytheism is not just about worshipping idols. Amen. Exactly but also ascribing partners to Allah, such as rabbis, priests, and we obeyed our masters and our dignitaries, and they led us astray. 
Polytheism is a big issue. Do you think it is so simple? As for the goals, yes, there is the goal of worship, but above it is the goal of righteousness, which is refraining from aggression. So I don't necessarily agree here that the goal of righteousness is higher than the goal of worship. I would rather rephrase it and say the goal is worship, but the goal of worship is righteousness. However, yes, he mentioned here, do you really think that shirk is so simple? Look around you, man. We are living in paganism. We are living in polytheism. How so? Because people worship their desires. It does not matter for God what you call it. Those people back in the day, they worshipped sticks and stones, certain statues, certain figures. So what? It's worthless. It's worthless to God as well. It has no power, of course. Man-made things. And the same applies to this day and age. Just look around you. Man-made things. Oh, look at my Ferrari. Look at my Lamborghini. Look at my chicks. So now you don't call it gods, but you behave like they are. You upload pictures of your cars to Instagram. Look at them. Look at them. You're pointing away from God. This is shirk. Therefore, prayer keeps one from immorality and wrongdoing. That's the purpose. Is there another goal after righteousness? Yes, Allah mentioned gratitude. Be pious, righteous to Allah that you may be thankful. Exactly. The Quran does not say be thankful that you may be righteous or be righteous that you may worship. The Quran is a rigorous system. This is the Quranic culture and its goals. Fair. But the issue of goals, righteousness and gratitude are not that big compared to No, no, brother, brother, hear me out. The entire goal of worship is righteousness in the Quran. All right, but now I'm asking you a specific question. Allah said, Allah does not forgive ascribing partners of worship unto him, so he may forgive all sins except polytheism. But now you're telling me that an atheist or a polytheist, the verse says Allah does not forgive ascribing partners of worship unto him. Please note the verb ascribing. It did not say the noun polytheist. Fair enough. It is the amount of polytheism that Allah does not forgive. But limitation-wise, religions other than Islam will not be accepted. And you're telling me atheists can go to heaven. What is Islam in the Quran? According to the Quran, Islam is made up of three stages. Dedication to the truth, as they may believe it or renounce it. You can know it by the opposites. The second stage is submitting to the truth. The third stage is the good deeds that reflect from the submission. If you examine this kind of Islam, submission, do you find it in other nations or in us? Honest dedication to information, submitting to true information, and the good deeds that stem from it. This is the Quranic meaning of Islam. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely amazing watch. Unfortunately, it cuts off here. I wished that it would have continued. That being said, as you heard during the video, I agree with most things that the Sheikh mentions here. This is not about reforming Islam. This is not about a new understanding of Islam. Quite the opposite. I would make the claim, and yet again, I'm not a scholar, that the Quran is so deep that we as people, as flawed, mere 
human beings will continuously learn from the Quran. You see it here on YouTube, a new video about science in the Quran, a new video about miracles of the Quran, a new video about mysterious numbers within the Quran and what not. New understanding is arising almost on a daily basis and this is the absolute majestic beauty of the Quran of course that we cannot say hey we understood it completely. Even the Quran itself claims that there are certain verses that we cannot understand but only Allah knows their meaning. Therefore this is an exploration that never ends and of course by reading the Quran reflecting upon it it is not to my surprise that this Sheikh came to the conclusion that hey it's not only about blindly worshipping go figure it is not only about being a Muslim by label what does it mean to submit yourself to God he beautifully displayed here that it is about truly submitting your will and then becoming righteous pious and doing God's will if you look at Mount Athos for example I visited those monks now you may think about them what you will you may say God didn't tell them to go there why do they do this why don't they have a family etc etc you name it but then you look into the Quran and the Quran says as well that amongst the Christians you have humble people the monks the monastic lifestyle is praised as well within the Quran it is acknowledged and yes those monks dedicate their life to God now you will say yeah but they believe in the Trinity that is their cultural upbringing that is their cultural understanding but nevertheless those monks stay away from all kinds of degeneracy that we are inflicting upon us in this modern day and age they live in seclusion and now I'm going to sit here and say yeah well but they are not Muslim by label this wouldn't make any sense whatsoever if you ask me personally I personally really do not care for the religious label I care about if you are a good righteous person as the Sheikh just said genuinely who cares that you're born into an Islamic family man I said it before in Germany I saw so many Muslims involved in degeneracy you wouldn't believe it man the violence the aggression the the and what not don't you understand this cannot bring you to heaven just because you are Muslim by default all right guys but this is it for today's video absolutely amazing watch please let me know in the comment section what you think about this and as always if you like the video leave the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel by patreon i appreciate it truly then all the links are in the description box below thank you so much for your ongoing support guys as always may god bless you all much love and peace